The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver! Jeb Ward ran the general store in the town of Big Spring, located at the eastern edge of arid rock strewn land, known as the Badlands in southern Colorado. He also ran the post office located in a corner of his store. Rear rooms in the same building served as living quarters for Jeb Ward, his son named Jack, and an elderly friend known as Uncle Dave. A warm afternoon found Uncle Dave and Jack seated on the porch when Jeb, wearing a look of anxiety, came out of the store. Hi, Jeb. You want something? Oh, no, I just came to look for that man from Gold City. Well, give him time. It's a 20-mile ride from Gold City. With a message as important as the one he's bringing, he should be on time. Hey, who's the message from? Uh, one of the most important men in the state, Rodney Farnsworth. Yeah, Farnsworth, eh? Yeah. The same gent who aims to sell a lot of diamonds? Yes. How'd you hear about it? Oh, it's no secret. Almost every night in the cafe I hear talk about Farnsworth selling his diamonds. Talk in the cafe? Yep. Yeah. Waiting on table, I hear lots of talk. Most men are surprised to find out Farnsworth needs cash. Everyone thought he was rich. He is. But he's planning some big gold mine operations and needs a lot of cash for machinery and labor. You'll never find a buyer for diamonds in this part of the country, Jim. Uh, he's not counting on that. A diamond broker is going to sell the stones in San Francisco. Yeah, I'd sure hate to be the one who takes them to the coast. And as sure as shooting, there'll be outlaws trying to steal them. The broker will be responsible for them after they reach Central City. Oh. The broker's coming there by train to get the diamonds. But Central City's on the far side of the Badlands. That's right. The most dangerous part of the trip will be between here and Central City. Well, that's why Farnsworth is making mighty secret plans for sending those diamonds across the Badlands. But now, I savvy, the messenger you're expecting has something to do with the sending of the diamonds. Yep. He's to bring me a letter telling how and when the stones will be brought here. Here? Yep. You see, as I get it, one man will bring them here... Another will pick him up and take him across the Badlands to the broker in Central City. If I were Mr. Farnsworth, I know who I'd get to carry the diamonds. Who's that, son? The Lone Ranger. 
I reckon Uncle Dave's been telling you stories about the masked man, eh? He sure has. <laughs> Here he comes. Come on. The Lone Ranger is riding this way. Yeah. I see a white horse heading this way, Jack, but the rider's not the Lone Ranger, not by a jug pole. Well, I guess you're right, Uncle Dave. That man's not wearing a mask, but his horse is white like silver. Uh, maybe that's the messenger. I hope so. I'm getting the fidgets waiting for him. Oh, He's stopping here. Howdy. 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 Is this Jeb Ward's place? That's right, mister. I'm Jeb Ward. And you're the man I want to see. I'm Ben East. Well, this is Uncle Dave Jones, and this is my son, Jack. Howdy. Yes, sir. Howdy. Mr. Ward, I'd like to talk to you confidentially. Yes? Mr. Farnsworth sent me. I've been expecting you. Step inside. Right. I'll go inside with you. I've got to go to my room and shave and get ready to go to work. Alone on the porch, the boy looked at the white horse and recalled all the thrilling stories he'd heard about the Lone Ranger and his great horse, Silver. As his imagination took flight, he went down the steps, moved to the side of the messenger's horse, and spoke softly. Hello there, old fella. Steady, steady now. I won't hurt you. I just want to rub your neck. Oh, I'd sure call you Silver. How are you, Silver, old boy? Jack picked up the reins and gripped the saddle pommel. You don't mind if I just sit in your saddle, do you? <laughs> Astride the horse that, to him, represented the fiery horse named Silver, Jack fancied himself as the Lone Ranger, riding to heroic adventures. <laughs> then a dog raced from between two buildings and startled the horse. <laughs> I mean, Chief. The noise and shouts brought Jeb, Dave, and Ben Eastman to the door, just in time to see the nervous horse bolt. The runaway horse dashed west from the store at the edge of town and raced across the rocky badlands. The boy swayed in the saddle as Chief dodged around massive boulders, but he stayed with the big horse for a couple of miles. Then his fingers became numb. His grip on the pommel relaxed, and he fell to the ground. No! He rolled down the steep side of an arroyo into a mass of underbrush, where he lay unconscious. When Jack regained consciousness, his head hurt badly, and he was too weak to move. Lying out of sight in the underbrush... He heard the voices of two men who had halted their horses near the edge of the arroyo. And I figure he'll keep the letter locked up with his cash in the cash box. Yeah, I reckon you're right. He's got no safe in the store. We'll bust open the cash box and read the letter. Knowing the plans, it'll be easy for us to waylay the gent who's carrying the diamonds. Yeah, but when Jeb sees the cash box broken open and the letter gone, he'll send word to Farnsworth and the plans will be changed. Then the information that's in the letter won't mean a thing. We'll leave the letter in the cash box and just take the cash. So that it'll look like an ordinary robbery. Even so, Jeb will figure that the thief saw the letter. And he'll let Farnsworth know. Not the way I've planned it. Well, go on. That old man they call Uncle Dave works in a cafe. We'll go there and start a fight. It'll lead to gunplay and Dave will be killed by accident. In the excitement... Slip the cash into his pocket. Uh-huh. The cash will be found there. The same amount that's missing from the cash box. Jeb Ward sure to figure Dave's the thief. <laughs> I savvy. And being dead, Dave can't deny it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and what's more, Jeb will figure Dave's the only one who saw the letter. So there'll be no reason to change the plans for handling the diamonds. Sounds good. <laughs> I figured you'd like it. That's why I asked you to meet me. Count me in. Oh, good. Come on, let's go. Steady, boys. Get up. Get up here. At the bottom of the arroyo, Jack had heard the conversation and realized something must be done. He tried to stand, but the effort was more than he could endure. With a soft moan, he lapsed into unconsciousness for the second time. Jack's father, Uncle Dave, and a number of other townsmen rode in search of the boy. Though there were no tracks on the rocky badlands, the messenger's horse was found several miles from where Jack lay unconscious. None of the searchers were near when the Lone Ranger and Tonto found the injured boy. After we've treated his head, Tonto, we'll take him with us to our camp. Ah, we take care of him better in camp. It was sunset when Jack again opened his eyes. 
He found himself in a woodland camp near a small stream. And crouched at his side were an Indian and a masked man. You... Take it easy, son. You'll be all right. Just lie quietly. Masked. Now I remember. I heard you talking. I know all about your plan. I heard you talking about killing Uncle Dave and robbing my dad. We said nothing like that. Yes, you did. I was conscious once before. I was lying in the Arroyo and you two stopped nearby. I couldn't see you, but... But I heard you. One of you was called Slick. And the other Baxter. Now listen to me, son. You didn't hear us. You heard two other men. Who are you? Uh, It's important. Tell us your name. uh, Oh, him faint again. Men called Slick and Baxter are planning robbery and murder. We must win this boy's confidence and find out his name before it's too late. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up? You always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a Devil Delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today, or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Now to continue. Sometime after sunset, Jeb and Uncle Dave returned to town. They stabled their horses, then entered the store building through the back door. I thought I locked this door when we left. Uh, we were in a rush to get the horses from the stable. You must have forgot to lock it. Yes, I reckon so. Uh, Dad ratted Jeb. I hated to quit looking for Jack. So did I. But the sheriff knows best. He has lots of men organized for the search. He figured I should be here in case someone finds the boy and brings him home. I could have kept searching. The sheriff's loco if he thinks I'm too old. Dad, rat is hide. I hope they find Jack before dark. Yeah, they'd better. Well, you may as well go to work, Uncle Dave. There's nothing you can do around here. I don't like to leave you here all alone. No, I don't mind. You go ahead. All right, if you say so. I'll feel better if I'm working. As darkness gathered, Jack lay near the fire in the Lone Ranger's camp. From time to time, his lips moved. His voice was barely audible. The masked man and Tonto leaned close to hear his words. Silver, old boy. He said silver. Ah. Lone Ranger. Where's the Lone Ranger? This Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? That's right. And Tonto's with me. So is Silver. Lone Ranger. Silver. Boy, he's stronger now. Who are you, son? What's your name? Ward. Jack Ward. The son of Jeb Ward? Yes. Uh, crooks. Crooks are going to rob my dad. You told us that. You said the crooks called each other Slick and Baxter. I remember. Jack, I must know everything those crooks said. I'll, I'll tell you, mister. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> In his store, Jeb Ward had not opened the drawer that held the broken cash box. He paced the floor while he waited for word from one of the men who searched for his son. He breathed many prayers and looked repeatedly at his watch. Shortly after half past nine, he heard the creaking of a floorboard in the living quarters. He thought Uncle Dave might have returned unexpectedly from the cafe. Uncle Dave, is that you? No. No, who in tarnation? Mast! Teddy Ward, your son sent me. Jack, where is he? What happened to him? What do you know about him? He's going to be all right. But where is he? He's in my camp. 
He had a bad fall and suffered a slight concussion. What? So my friend will bring him home later tonight. Who, who are you? Your son knows me as the Lone Ranger. The, the Lone Ranger? Well, sakes alive, if that's true... It's then... true. Jeb, your son told me about two crooks who planned to break open your cash box and take the money. My cash box? Yes. Had it been broken open? Well, I'll see. It's right here in this drawer. Here's the tin box. It's been busted open. Here's a letter from Farnsworth there. Well, yes, but how... Now listen to me, Jeb. The money was taken by men called Baxter and Slick. Yeah? Is there any way you can identify it? Yes. Most of it was counted and tied, ready for the bank. There was a slip of paper on it with the amount of money noted in my own handwriting. Those crooks intend to frame Uncle Dave for the robbery. But why? They're planning to steal the Farnsworth diamonds. The money theft was just a cover-up to give them a chance to read that letter. Great Dave. Well, tell me what... I want to be sure Dave is safe. Is he out searching for your son? No, he's going to his job in the cafe. The cafe? I must reach him before he's killed. What? I'll explain later. Bring the sheriff to the cafe. But he's out looking for Jack. So are the deputies. Bring anyone with the authority to make an arrest. The coroner will do. But what... I'll see you at the cafe. Baxter and Slick stood just inside the swinging doors of the cafe and watched Uncle Dave wait on the customers who sat at tables. That's the man, Slick. The old fella with the white ears. Yeah. You sure you know how we work this? I don't know. We've been over it often enough. I'll go and start talking to the old galoot. Then you come along and bump into me. We start an argument that leads to gunplay. I know, I know. The old man shot by accident, then I slipped the cash into his pocket. Now, go ahead and start talking to him. Well, howdy. Oh, good evening, stranger. You want to sit at a table? Your name's Dave, isn't it? Yep. Well, that's what I thought. You live with a man who runs a general store, right? That's right, mister. Is his name uh, Jeb Ward? Right again. (laughs) I suppose you wonder who I... (laughs) Hey, what's the idea of bumping me? Who bumped you? You did. I did not. You saw me coming and tried to elbow me. I did nothing of the sort. Hey, are you calling me a liar? You say I tried to elbow you and you're a liar. Why, you... Now, James. No man can call me a liar. Now, you shut up. Now, as for you, mister, I called you a liar. Well, the man who says that better be ready to back it up with a six gun. I'm ready any time. Oh, James, James, please, don't start gunplay. You keep out of this. Why don't you go for that gun? You talk big. You afraid to draw? Who says I'm afraid? Oh, my sakes. I do. All right, you ask. No! No! Two shots fired by a man in the doorway streaked across the room. One bullet smashed Baxter's partly drawn gun, and another grazed Slick's arm. All eyes turned toward the masked man, who still held a brace of heavy guns. All of you keep out of this. As for you two, if you don't want more gunplay, stand where you are and don't make a fast move. You smashed my gun. Your name, Baxter? Uh, yes, what of it? Then your partner must be the man called Slick. What the two of you? You'll know in a minute. Meanwhile, I'll take that gun. Are you? Hold it. I'm still covering you. I see here, mister. You can't come in here with your guns blazing. If I hadn't fired as I did, someone might have been seriously wounded or killed. Uh, these two men were just about to start gunplay when the masked man opened fire. Are you Uncle Dave? Uh, yes. How'd you know? I've heard about you. Well, who in tarnation are you? Jeb Ward will tell you when he arrives. He's bringing someone with authority to arrest a couple of thieves. Uncle Dave! There's Jeb now. Hi, Jeb! He's got the corner with him. Hey, Jeb, you know anything about this masked man? I know a lot about him. Jeb, these men are known as Slick and Baxter. They're the ones who robbed you. That's not true. We didn't rob anyone. Slick's right. We're not robbers. We were just standing here talking when the masked man opened fire on us. He smashed my gun and hurt Slick's arm. You broke into Ward's store. We did not. You better be able to prove that, mister. You can't make accusations. Maybe the proof is in one of your pockets. I'll find out. You first, Slick. You can't search me without... No. Keep them covered, Jeb. You've no right... Stand still. Here's a package of money. That's my cash. There's a deposit slip attached to this money with Jeb's name on it. Jeb, that's the cash we got ready for the bank. That's right. That came from my cash drawer. That's my handwriting on the deposit slip. All right, take the money. That proves these hombres robbed the store. They must have done it while we were in the badlands. It's a frame-up. Baxter, were you with Slick when he robbed the store? 
No, I didn't have any part in it. Baxter, you did too. Shut up, you blame fool. The whole thing was your idea. You got me into this. You stood guard while I picked the lock on the door and while I busted the cat. Will you shut up? All of you men heard the admission of guilt? That's yes, right, sir. Are you satisfied, coroner? Yes, I'll lock them both in jail. Pull out your hands, you crooks. Uh, handcuffs. Right. All right, now, get moving. All right. Go on. Jeb, the masked man said you'd tell us who he is. Well, I'll do that, Uncle Dave, but first he's got to prove to me he's the man he claims to be. I'll do that when we get back to your store, Jeb, and we better leave now. Toto may have Jack home by the time we get there. Later that night, Jack lay on his bed, propped up on pillows and resting comfortably. Uncle Dave sat at his side, waiting impatiently for Jeb Ward to finish talking to the masked man in the store part of the building. Uh, but, Dad, <laughs> read it, Jack. If you know who the masked man is, why in tarnation won't you tell me? Well, I know who he is, Uncle Dave, but you know what Dad said. He's got to make sure. So I'll wait until Dad well, comes back. That's who he is. Uh, Jeb, now will you tell me? <laughs> yep. You see, the masked man had a letter of identification from Mr. Farnsworth and other letters to prove his identity. Uh, I'm sure glad he's come and gone. It's a relief to be rid of the Farnsworth diamonds. Rid of them? Yep. You see, uh, they came here some time ago in an ordinary-looking package, before anyone knew Farnsworth planned to send them across the Badlands. And they've been here all the time? Yeah, yeah. I had him hidden under the floor. Oh, great day. <laughs> the messenger brought word that the masked man would call for the diamonds. So he's the one who's to take them across the Badlands. That's right, son. I reckon there'll be no crooks interfering with that hombre. No, sir. Those diamonds are safe with the Lone Ranger. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita, we're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Listen to the Lone Ranger. They're attacking from both sides. Some of the masked man's bullets found their marks, wounding a few of the crew. The others pushed closer until it seemed that he'd be overpowered by force of numbers. Then bullets began to fly from another direction. Hey! Men coming up the gangplank. Toto, with the sheriff and his men, ran up the gangplank, firing as they came. Put your guns in the name of law. What is this? The sheriff's order had a strange effect on the ship's captain. Hold your fire, men. Hey, what's the idea, Kevin? Shut up, but why do we not fight them? You oh. fools, they have nothing on us. I'll tell the sheriff we found a stowaway aboard who was trying to wreck the ship. Uh, My men have you all covered. Drop your guns. Right, Do as the sheriff says, men. Uh, uh, sheriff, I suppose the commotion aboard my ship brought you here. There's a stowaway aboard. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. <laughs> a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>